Hey guys, it's Jake here from Team c for g coming at you today with a profile from our OTS store championships that was held. Um, so I ended up taking the event with Unchained Fiendsmith. Uh, it was a deck that I literally built the night before, but it was something I was kind of keen to try. So um, yeah, there was a couple of stumbles over the course of the day, but hopefully those kinks will be ironed out. But um, yeah, really happy to have come away with the win there. Um, so, without further ado, uh, here is the deck. So, we start with three Unchained Twins Aruha. Um, one of your main cards for the deck, so you need to max it out. Um, we've got uh, two Unchained Rakea, and then just the one Sarama. Um, the reason we're now running two of the Rakea is because with the Fiendsmith stuff, a lot more of your extra deck is needed. So... Uh, you need to see more cards because you can't run Prosp to go digging for it anymore. It used to be one of the big strengths of the deck is that Prosp was great. Um, but yeah, without Prosp, you need stuff to be able to get started. So now we're playing two Rakea because uh, drawing this on its own with no other cards is garbage. Then we move on to the one ofs for Unchained. We've got the one of Unchained Abominable Soul, Abominable Unchained Soul, I should say. The Unchained Soul of Shavara and the Unchained Soul of Shyama. Uh, you only run them at one, you only ever want to see them at the certain times. Uh, drawing this is great, uh, drawing this is terrible, and drawing this is sometimes okay, but sometimes more often than not terrible. Um, all pretty uh, known cards at this point. Uh, then we move on to the Fiendsmith stuff. So we've got the three Engraver and the one Lurie. Uh, did have to borrow this, admittedly. I didn't have one. So thank you to Lucas from our locals for lending that to me. Uh, maxing out on those. Uh, then we've got the three tour guide with the one Fiendish Rhino Warrior. Uh, this is a one card combo for the entire line, uh, being that they're all Fiend related. So um, incredibly good if for the deck. Um, glad that it's around. Uh, and then Fiendish Rhino Warrior can dump a bunch of the stuff that you would otherwise need in Grave to be able to get stuff going. So really great. Uh, some non engine stuff. We've got. Three Ash Blossom and three Nibiru. Uh, it's a very heavy hand trap format, um, so you definitely want to see these. Um, admittedly, you probably could change these out so that you're not playing as hard into the uh, Snake Eyes matchup uh, if you needed it, but it's so important in other ones that if you were to sort of take it out, I'd probably just side it more, more than anything uh, rather than taking it out completely, but depends on what works for you. Uh, Nib uh, didn't have to summon one at all today, but from what I saw of the other matchups that were going on, it was putting in big work. Uh, and then we've got the Magnemut, the Baldrake, and the Two Drills Worm. Um, yeah, super important to try and stop the Chaos targets like your uh, Fiendsmith for your opponent and stuff going off. Um, Baldrake, um, I think I summoned Baldrake once, uh, maybe twice throughout the entire thing. Uh, didn't really see them that much, but yeah, wouldn't say that you could cut them. They're super important. Um, and then we move on to some spells. We've got the three Abominations Prison. Um, fantastic card. Honestly, it's so good to have that utility of you can search stuff with it, and then if you've opened multiple, you can set it and pop it with your Rakea and stuff. Super good. Super good to have that utility in the card. Uh, and then we've got the one tract, uh, obviously to search and dump your Leary. Um, I was in a fairly decent, like not an amazing state admittedly, but I was in a fairly decent state against uh, Ben in my last round and I just completely forgot to activate this and it didn't matter. Um, then we've got the double tactics and the double thrust. Uh, thrust is huge for this deck. Um, being able to set a trap from your deck means that you can then set an extender or disruption, depending on how good your hand is. Uh, tactics put in mad work for me today. Can't speak highly enough about tactics. Um, I was in positions most of the time where I could extend beyond my initial play and the tactics allowed me to rip the hand trap that would have otherwise stopped my turn out of their hand so that I could keep playing and set up the full board. Um, tactics is insane. Uh, thrust admittedly didn't do as much work today. It's definitely like 100% you have to have it in the deck. I would have it at three if I had a third uh, ulti specifically. Um, yeah, insane pair of cards to have. Uh, and then we've got... 
uh, one call by and three cross out designator. Um, as good as the deck is, that does lose to some specific hand traps in specific points. Um, so yeah, hugely important to have these. Uh, didn't see these all day, uh, so do with that information what you will. Uh, Call by the Grave uh, did get stopped by a solemn judgment at one point today, but like you can't really help that, otherwise it, it would have been wrapped up there. Won the game anyway, so yeah, it's either. Uh, and then we move on to some traps. We've obviously got the three escape and two abominable chamber. Um, depending on what you do with the rest of the build, you could bump this up to three, but there is occasions where you just open all traps and nothing to pop them with, so it is a risky game to play. Um, but yeah, otherwise cards are insane. Uh, this card being more important now with the current lines makes me think you could swap these ratios, have three chamber and two escape. Um, yeah, because the ratios have changed somewhat since the initial builds where we had three Shavara. Um, but again, again, that's something I could definitely play around with later on. And then finally, we've got the double imperm for traps. Um, yeah, more so for a cross out target. Um, most of the time, you'd like depending on your actual board that you build to do the disruption. But having a few other traps set in the back row can't hurt. Uh, then we move on to the extra deck. So we've got uh, two. Unchained Soul, Lord of Yama. Uh, very happy to have both QCRs. Very nice. Um, insane card for the deck. Absolutely insane. I love it so much. Um, then we've got the two uh, Unchained Soul of Rage. Uh, only the one QCR. Um, I honestly didn't see myself playing a more pure version of this deck. I thought for sure I'd end up being sort of pivoted over to Ubel, but... Um, yeah, decided to give this a go and I'm quite happy with it, so I might have to end up getting that second QCR. Um, but the secret looks good. Um, yeah, insane disruption off turn, being able to link off an opponent's monster, summon an SP and banish a further card is just insane. Card is bonkers. Uh, then we've got the Unchained Soul of Anguish and the Unchained Abomination. Um, I summoned this at one point today to sort of go for game, uh, and yeah, summon this offer because I was already fiend locked. Um, yeah, good disruption. Um, really important too with this being able to link it off with a Druus Worm into an access code means that they can't then Druus Worm your stuff. Um, so it does sort of turn that interaction off. Uh, and this card just popping stuff all the time is just so good. Uh, then we've got the Fiendsmith package. Uh, so we've got one sequence, one Requiem. Moon of the Closed Heaven to actually get you going. Uh, the Lacrima and the Desiree. Um, yeah, so pretty self-explanatory stuff. You're going to be seeing in a lot of profiles moving forward. But yeah, pretty much you like halfway through like setting up your Unchained board, you pivot into this um, and then it sort of sets it up. Most of the time your end board's going to be um, without the actual uh, this guy on the board. Uh, you'll generally try and set up so that he's coming back after. Um, just means that you're like not getting impermed. Uh, the deck's a little bit more fragile in that sense since the uh, limiting of Shavara, but hopefully he comes back. Maybe. Um, and then we've got the generics. We've got the access code, which you saw before. The Diddy D Wave Hiking Caesar, the SP Little Knight, and then sort of in your. Um, Smith package, you've got the Necro Quip Princess. Um, the lines that I've been playing today did allow me to get the extra draw off that, which more often than not is super helpful, just being able to get those extra resources. Um, and the card, the way that we make it is just so free. Like, it's just so free. Um, only things that I would maybe change um, if I was thinking on it, um, I might end up sort of taking out one of these guys. Uh, and sub it out for another DDD Wave King because uh, there is instances where you can end on multiple uh, sixes. Um, so being able to set up two, well, in effect, four special summon negates just seems kind of bonkers to me. Um, so that might be something to look into later. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, super happy with the way the deck performed. Um, admittedly, it was an OTS champ, so there was uh, limited numbers of people actually attending because they scheduled them all for the same day. Um, but it did perform really well against 
uh, three meta decks uh, in two Fiendsmith Snake Eyes and one Fiendsmith Ubel. Um, admittedly, the Ubel player didn't open all that well. Um, but yeah, super happy with the way the deck performed. Um, keen to see what else the deck can achieve. Um, but yeah, if you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to jump into the comments and let us know. Otherwise, we look forward to bringing you another profile later on. Thanks, guys.